Rizal's life in Paris. In March 1889, due to the approaching Universal Exposition scheduled to open on May 6, 1889, it became extremely difficult for the visitors to secure living quarters in Paris. The approaching exposition attracted thousands of tourists and caused all hotel accommodations to be taken. As a result, Rizal was disgusted because the French landlords took advantage of the high demand for the living quarters, raising the rents of the rooms. So for a short period of time, Rizal lived in the house of his friend Valentin Ventura where he polished his annotated edition of Marga's book. He also transferred from one hotel to another until he lived in a little room together with two other Filipinas. Although life in Paris was gay with a sparkling merriment and joyous social parties, Rizal continued to be busy in his serious pursuits. Most of his time was spent in the reading room of Bibliothèque Nationale because of Marga's book. He also wrote letters for his family and friends in the gymnasium and visiting his friends, which were all included in his letters to his family in Kalamba sharing his daily life experience in Paris. In his spare times, he used to dine in the homes of his friends, Dr. Trinidad Pardo de Tavera, Dr. Felix Pardo de Tavera, and Paz Pardo de Tavera, wife of Juan Luna. On June 24, he also became the baptismal godfather of Paz and Juan Luna's newborn baby girl. And in his other letter as well, he mentioned that Filipinos gathered four times a week and sang the kundiman, ate sotanghon, adobo, and others. Rizal and Paris Exposition of 1889 Like any ordinary Filipino tourist in a foreign land, Rizal was fascinated by the Universal Exposition of Paris which opened on May 6, 1889. The greatest attraction of this exposition was the Eiffel Tower, 984 feet high, which was built by Alexander Eiffel, celebrated French engineer. Rizal and his friends attended the opening ceremonies and saw the cutting of the ribbon by President Sadiq Carnot of the Third French Republic. Paris was jammed with thousands of tourists coming from all parts of the world. Daily, the exposition drew a vast crowd of 200,000 persons or more. One of the features of the exposition was the international art competition in which Felix R. Hidalgo, Juan Luna, Felix Pardo de Tavera, and Rizal participated. Hidalgo's painting awarded second prize. The paintings of Juan Luna and Felix Pardo de Tavera each obtained a third prize, while Rizal's entry, a bust which he modeled, got no prize. This bust was quite good to qualify for the exhibition, but not good enough to win an international prize. Kid Club. On March 19, 1889, the same day when he arrived in Paris from London, Rizal organized his compatriots into a society called Kid Luck Club. The members are Antonio Juan Luna, Gregorio Aguilera, Fernando Canon, Laura de Mayuga, Julio Lorente, Guillermo Cuato, and Baldomero Rojas. In John Bravos, Rizal was enchanted by the dignified and proud bearing of the American Indians, so he created Indian Brabos, believing we should not be ashamed of our names and be proud of the name Injo and make our Spanish enemies revise their conception. The Indian Bravo replaced Kidla Club and its members are pledged to excel in intellectual and physical prowess in order to win the admiration of the foreigners, particularly the Spaniards. They practice the use of the sword and pistol. Rizal taught them judo which learned in Japan. Annotated edition of Morga published. Rizal outstanding achievement in Paris was the publication in 1890 of his annotated edition of Morga's Successus, which he wrote in the British Museum. It was printed by Garnier Freres. The prologue was written by Professor Blumentritt upon the request of Rizal. In his prologue, Blumentritt commended Rizal for his fine historical scholarship. However, he frankly censored Rizal for two things which revealed Rizal errors. Rizal commit the error of many historians in appraising the events of the past in the light of present standard, and Rizal attack on the church were unfair and unjustified because the abuses of the friars should not be construed to mean that Catholicism is bad. Notwithstanding the two blemishes of Rizal's works, it is a splendid piece of historiography. 
result annotated and published Morga Sucesus because it was the best of the many histories of the Philippines written by the early Spanish writers, being accurate in the narration of events, unbiased in judgment, and unmarred by childish fantasies. Rizal dedicated his new edition of Morga to the Filipino people so that they would know of their glorious past. In this historical work, Rizal proved that Filipinos were already civilized before the advent of Spain. They had plots, government, laws, writings, literature, religion, arts, sciences, and commerce with neighboring Asian nation. Rizal thus blasted the historical heresies of the Spanish writers who claimed that early Filipinos were savages and were of low mentality. Comment on Morga's publication date The title page of the Rizal annotated edition of Morga reads Paris Libreria de Garnier Hermanos 1890 From this printed date, all biographers of Rizal came to assert that this edition of Morga was published in 1890. However, there is no documentary evidence to show that Rizal edition of Morga must have come off the press in 1889, not 1890. On October 12, 1889, Blumentritt wrote to Rizal from Late Miritz, saying, I have just received your magnificent edition of Morga. This edition with your erudite notes will glorify your name. Rizal himself, in his letter to Dr. Baldomero Rojas from Paris, December 28, 1889, stated, Today I sent to Lipa four copies of Morga. Later, I will send some more. From Barcelona, Mariano Ponce wrote to Rizal on December 31, 1889, saying, I received the book Successus. Many thanks. I have read only Blooming Treats for Log. Truly excellent. Please send me immediately about 10 copies, and I can send to the Philippines by the first mail that is going there. The three letters cited above, from Blooming Treat, B. Rojas, and M. Ponce are incontrovertible proof that Morga Sucesus by Rizal actually came off the press in 1889. Otherwise, how could these three friends of Rizal read the book before 1890? Rizal as historian Rizal's research studies in the British Museum London in the Bibliotheque National Paris enrich historical knowledge. His splendid annotations to Morga's book showed his familiarity with the basic principles of historiography. As he once told Isabella de los Reyes, a historian ought to be rigorously imparted and never assert anything on my own authority. I cite texts and when I do, I have them before me. His knowledge of foreign languages enabled Rizal to read historical documents and books in the languages in which they were originally written. For instance, he read Pigafetta's famous first voyage around the world in Italian, the historical works of Marsden, Raffles, Lord Stanley, and Wallace in English, the writings of Blumentritt, Jagor, and Virchow in German, the books of M. Jacquet, J. Mallet, and A. Marche in French, by his extensive reading of Archibald's sources and books in foreign countries, he acquired wide knowledge not only the Philippine history, but also the history of European colonization in Asia. Aside from his excellent annotations on Morga's book, Rizal wrote other works which qualify him to be a real historian. Among them were the two historical commentaries written in London, December 6, 1888, and Tawalisi of IBN Batuta, January 7, 1889. Filipinas dentro de 100 años, the Philippines within a century. Sobre la indolencia de los Filipinos. The indolence of the Filipinos. La política colonial on Filipinas. Colonial policy in the Philippines. Manila and El Mes de December 1872. Manila in the month of December 1872. Historia de la familia Rizal de Calamba. History of the Rizal family of Calamba. Los Pueblos del Archipelago Indico, the peoples of the Indian Archipelago.
the Filipino leader century of Filipinas, Dentro Mission Ayas, was an article written by Ms. Rizal and was published in La Solidaridad in four issues. In this article, Ms. Rizal expressed his views about Spanish colonization and predicted with the music of piracy the tragedy of Spanish sovereignty in Asia. In the beginning of this article, he portrayed the glorious past of Philippine people, then describes the economic stagnation and unhappiness of Filipino people under the harsh and bungling Spanish rule. Towards the last paragraph of this article, Jose Rizal peered into the future and warned the Spain of what will happen to her colonial empire in Asia if she will not adopt a more liberal and enlightened policy towards the Philippines. I'm going to give you some significant passages of this article. Who were the people? The Philippines should remain Spanish if they will enter upon the law of life and civilization. If the rights of the inhabitants are respected, if other rights give them are granted, if the liberal policy of the government is carried out without trickery or meanness, without subterfuges or false interpretation. If the Philippines secure their independence after the heroic or stubborn conflict, they can rest assured that neither England nor Germany nor France and still less Holland will dare to take up what Spain has been unable to hold. Perhaps the great American Republic, whose interest lies in the Pacific and who had no hand in the spoliation of Africa, may someday dream of foreign possession. This is not impossible, for the example is contagious, convetiousness, and ambition are among the strongest vices. Intelligence of the Filipino. This prestigious work of historical scholarship of Rizal in the form of essay acts as a defense in the alleged indulgence of the Filipino. Rizal made a critical study of the causes of why we Filipinos didn't work during the Spanish regime or during the Spanish colonization. He also stated that we Filipinos are not indulgent by nature. He made a point about we Filipinos being industrious and hardworking by nature and he also stated that the Filipino people or the Philippine, the country of the Philippines itself is active in the economy such as agriculture, commerce, and industries. Rizal also believes that the Spanish regime or the Spanish colonization brought a downfall in the economic life of the Filipino people. Project for Filipino College in Hong Kong Rizal planned a magnificent project to establish a modern college in Hong Kong during his stay in Paris. This college aims to train and to educate men of good family and financial means in accordance with the demands of the modern times and circumstances. A rich Filipino resident from Paris, Mr. Marciano Cananan, from Mexico, Pampanga promised to help him raise 40,000 pesos as initial capital for the college. The curriculum of the college consisted of the following subjects. First is ethics, study of religion, natural law, civil law, deportment, and hygiene. It also includes mathematics, physics, chemistry, natural history, geography, political economy, universal history, Philippine history, logic, rhetoric, and poetics. This also includes Spanish, English, French, German, Chinese, and Tagalog languages. This also included gymnastics, equitation, fencing, swimming, music, drawing, and even dancing. This project of Rizal did not materialize, but he was able to found a school for boys in the Philippines. Telepono. Rizal defended Nolly using his pamphlets. This work, for Telepono, was a reply to another slender, Father Salvador, who was the mastermind of banning of Nolly Mitangere. 
This pamphlet was published in Barcelona in 1889. This was under the authorship of De Masalang, Rizal's pen name. This ridicule a telephone conversation between Father Front from Madrid and the Father Provincial of San Agustin Convent, Manila. Christmas in Paris It was a wintry day in Paris on December 25, 1889, when Rizal and Jose Albert planned to have a sumptuous Christmas dinner in Capitan's Justus Trinidad room. They prepared fried chicken, rice, and vegetables for Christmas dinner. This was Rizal's last Christmas in Paris. After New Year, he briefly visited to London, maybe because of no reason. First is to check up his annotated edition of Morga Successas with the original copy in the British Museum, and lastly to see Gertrude Beckett for the last time. In the middle of January 1890, Rizal decided to return to Paris where he experienced a terrible headache and got stricken by an influenza that ranging in Europe that time. <laughs>